Ajuman to direct the Future of Sport Institute. Can you all give Dr. Ajuman just a, a hand clap? Right. Um, we are just super excited. He is here uh, in our George and Baby Blanda Endowed Fellowship in Sports Leadership. He joined a powerhouse team in our Department of Kinesiology and Health Promotion with the Institute's Assistant Director, Dr. Marta Mack, who has done prior programming specific to this area, and with the Institute's affiliated faculty, Dr. Justin Nichols, who if you all don't know Dr. Nichols, he's probably one of the best people on the face of this earth, you need to get to know him. And Dr. Rashid Flowers, who all work really, really hard in the Department of Kinesiology and Health Promotions. As Acting Dean of the UK College of Education, I'm looking forward to what this team has in store. They have a packed agenda today, as you can see, and I believe offers something for everyone that's here. And as far as I know, there are no planned appearances from Mark Pope, but you never know. <laughs> same boat but a lot of times on a smaller scale being rifled there's you know the numbers are definitely a little bit different and we're going to find out this year we've got a first person coming from the transfer portal currently in our sport the kids kind of put themselves in it one to improve their financial position from scholarships since we're equivalency sports but then also sometimes coaches will kind of fleece their teams if they made the wrong call uh, in the pre term that's coming out there, multimedia rights, that, uh, you know, I spent the first part of my career in professional sports, and when uh, uh, I was talking to, to JMI Sports about joining them uh, back in 2015, and they threw out the, the term, uh, you know, runners or multimedia rights business, uh, I was like, what is that? What is MMR? Uh, it's not a term that's really used in, in the professional, on the professional side. Uh, it's unique to college. It's unique to college uh, for a lot of different reasons. And there are maybe some other places that, that, that treat it similarly, but the big difference is the professional leagues and, and teams, or certainly the, you know, the big four or five, they, all, they do it in-house. Uh, they don't, uh, it, you know, they, the, the multimedia rights, uh, they, they don't hire an agency to, to do that for them. And there's lots of reasons why that's done. Uh, on, on the university side, but basically, uh, you know, in, in layman's terms, or to simplify it, uh, the multimedia rights in the college space and what we do is, uh, you know, bringing corporate partnerships to universities uh, through a variety of platforms, every platform that, that you can think of other than the live games that are broadcast on, on TV. Athletes in the program. Um, it's always been going through the, or made going through the filter of uh, for value. So I wanted to really, really emphasize that. Second thing is have your own little small board of directors. Uh, you could call them mentors. Maybe you have one, maybe you have a few. Maybe that's uh, someone that has been a 
a great investor, someone that's in your family, uh, one of your best friends, someone you're working for, people that you identify, that you want to learn from. Um, finding people that you can trust and trust that they're going to pour into you. Um, relationships, relationships, relationships. That, that is so important. The value of investing in others. Um, you know what it's like to have a great friend that you can trust, but you still have to invest in others. You gotta run your network a little bit. Develop those meaningful connections that you have. Um, relationships take time, but they're well worth the time invested. And you'll be so surprised where they'll come into play somewhere else in your life that you never could, um, could have ever expected. Uh, so for me, you know, this is my 31st year of a role as director of athletics. I was hoping when I became athletic director, I could get two or three years out of it. I, it's, a, it's a volatile profession, and I didn't know for sure how long someone could uh, um, tolerate me or how well I could navigate in all the various uh, levels of politics. The number one way for athletes to protect themselves is through education. I believe that then, I believe that now, and I will continue to believe that in the future, especially as we look at all of the changes coming to college sports. I truly believe that education is critical. It's funny that we have to actually say that when we think about name, image, and likeness in the context of college, university, higher education, right? But this real world practical education to help uh, athletes and others that we'll talk about navigate this space is critically important. So in 2015, we started this company called Anomaly Sports Group. We've since uh, uh, joined with another organization. We call ourselves Advanced, and we just focus on education. We educate uh, athletic departments, we educate teams, work at the pro level, at the college level. So my con the, the lens through which I look at all of this, the context for my remarks is based on how do we protect athletes and how do we educate athletes, right? So that's why I care so passionately and so deeply about this topic. So, great panel earlier on name, image, and likeness. I, I wanna, I wanna uh, take the definition of NIL kind of one step further, right? If we, um, it was talked about the persona rights, it was talked about the, the rights for student athletes to earn compensation, all are correct. I would add one twist to it. If we look at name, image, and likeness, what name, image, and likeness truly is is the ability for a student athlete now to license or lend for a fee the use of their name, their image, and their likeness. Now, if we think about that sentence, right, the licensing of someone's name, image, and likeness, the licensing of someone's persona rights, that is very much a business transaction, right? That is a legal, business, contractual transaction that happens. So you have to believe that education is critical here, right? If we're asking now a potentially 17-year-old, 18-year-old, 20-year-old, et cetera, right, uh, young student athlete to engage in this business transaction, there has to be some education around how they can navigate this. Um, I would also say, if we're being completely honest with each other, that there's really two types of name, image, and likeness, right? There's what we call the pure, or what I might kind of call the pure NIL, which is very much me licensing the use of my name, image, and likeness to a brand, to a company, uh, to help them promote a product or a service, and that helps them dive deeper into the, uh, their, their intended demographic that they're trying to uh, go after, right? And that is very much a pure kind of plan for name, image, and likeness. But we also have synthetic, and synthetic NIL is very much more like the collectives. They, uh, very similar to a pay-for-play model, if we're being honest, right? And we have to be honest about that because that's what we're experiencing.
those things have um, mean different things for athletes of color than for white athletes, right? In terms of the ways in which um, women are um, pursued on social media is different from uh, men, but then still yet different for women of color um, in those kinds of ways. And so we have to we have to be we have to have a lot of different kinds of people at the table to think more creatively about how we protect athletes and, and the types of things that we do. Yeah. Yes. Just to um, add a little bit further, because I think an example is necessary. And so um, recently I wrote for the Sport Business Journal an op-ed on um, how black women are the aesthetic of college women's basketball. And what I meant by that was there are certain things that if you are not a black woman or you're not attuned to the black community, you just wouldn't notice watching the game. I'm noticing their wig lengths. I'm noticing their wig textures. I'm noticing the hair colors. I'm noticing their edges. Some of you are like, what are edges? Like that's a, a culturally competent thing where um, that's why representation matters. And so I'm asking why aren't more um, makeup brands partnering with uh, black women collegiate athletes because their makeup's done, the lashes are done, the, the, the nails are done. And so there's opportunities here, particularly from an NIL perspective to connect it back to some other comments. And so that is why identity matters. Um, and I just wanted to bring that to the fold, particularly when we're in, in a time right now where people don't want that to matter, right? And so it matters because when you can connect the dots, um, particularly for the outcome of centering our senses of self, I think we can see the connection to not only profit, but to more intentional organizations.